To determine if a person is dead, a qualified doctor will first check for the following. Absence of pulse, absence of breathing, absence of muscle reflex, absence of pupillary constriction by shining a light on the eyes. And if all of this is absent, then we are, in fact, dead. So, what happens in the hour immediately after death? The body reaches a state of primary flaccidity, where all the muscles of the body relax. For instance, eyelids lose tension, pupils dilate and the jaw falls open. The body will sag due to the loss of tension in the muscles, and absence of muscle control will lead to the release of urine and feces. As soon as the heart stops, the body will start to grow pale as the blood drains from the smaller veins in the skin. This process is called pallor mortis. The body also starts to cool, and body temperature drops from the normal 37 degrees Celsius or 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit to the temperature surrounding the body. The medical term for this death chill is algor mortis. Surprisingly, the temperature drops in a linear progression, approximately 1.5 degrees per hour. It is this decrease in temperature that helps forensic scientists to determine the time of death. I'm sure you've watched how the forensic experts tell the detectives the time of death in a murder case on NCIS, and you've always wondered how. Well, now you know. In the two to six hours following death, the body will reach a state of liver mortis. As the heart is not pumping blood anymore, gravitational pull forces the blood to pull towards the body parts closest to the ground. The accumulated blood at that spot can cause a reddish-brown discoloration, very similar to a bruise we would get in real life. It is called the post-mortem stain, a stain acquired after death. Although the muscles in the body were flaccid when death occurred, three hours later, the body suffers what is known as rigor mortis. The chemical changes taking place inside the body cause the muscles to stiffen. Starting with the eyelids, jaw and neck, the stiffness will move down to the abdomen, arms, legs and finally the fingers and toes. As the hours pass, the limbs become stiffer and harder to move or manipulate. The knees and elbows will flex and the toes and fingers will appear crooked. At 12 hours, the state of rigor mortis is at its maximum. And then, surprisingly, things start to reverse. The continued chemical changes occurring in the body will cause tissue to decay and the muscles to loosen. This process is called secondary flaccidity. During this time, the skin will shrink, making us believe that the hair and nails are growing. Quite a miracle of nature, isn't it? 